Welcome to the Quick Train Modeler Getting Started tutorial series. This is part three of a 10 part series designed to get new Quick Train Modeler users up and running as quickly as possible. In this module, you will learn how to customize the view in Quick Train Modeler. There are a handful of settings that will dramatically impact how your data and 3D scenes appear. We will be using the Des Moines LiDAR data again in this video, so feel free to visit appliedimagery.com download and download the Des Moines LiDAR data and imagery zip file. Thanks again to the Iowa Department of Transportation for allowing us to use the data. Let's start by loading the Des Moines DSM and overlaying the four band imagery mosaic. As we learned in chapter two, click the open model button and navigate to the Des Moines surface model folder. Choose the all returns DSM GeoTIFF. We'll overlay the image by clicking the overlay orthorectified texture button navigating to the four band imagery folder and selecting the mosaic. The image will appear in the 3D scene as well as in the layer tree. A quick note on terminology here. DSMs will have buildings and trees while DEMs, also known as bare earth, will have all of these removed. Now on to customizing the view. The tools with the biggest impact to the appearance of the scene are in four areas. One, the basic layer toggle buttons two, the lighting and point size buttons, three, the special overlays folder in the layer tray, four, the status bar. There are four layer toggle buttons in the standard button bar. Let's start by toggling them all off, then looking at them one by one. Height color displays an artificial color scheme based on the absolute elevation. If you right click on this button, you can reconfigure the color scheme. The earth tones palette is very popular for DSMs and DEMs. A useful shortcut when zoomed in is typing Z on the keyboard, which will scale the height color range to just the data visible in the scene. This can be very helpful in rugged, mountainous terrain. The contour line toggle displays real-time contour lines. Right-clicking on it also displays a configuration window. The next button to the right is the textures toggle, which toggles the entire texture layer on and off. Color imagery will not blend with the height palette unless specifically configured in the opacity settings. Last is the vertex color toggle. Vertex colors contain things like LiDAR intensity and analysis results like this line of sight result. The minimap display has miniature versions of the same toggle buttons that are on the primary button bar, but these work independently of the primary toggles. Lighting controls are accessed from the light bulb button. From here, you can control brightness, contrast, and the direction of the lighting. Lighting direction can be set with the time slider, providing geo-correct lighting, or by the shortcut of holding down the control button, left clicking and dragging to set the lighting direction as desired. Lighting direction has no effect on point clouds. Just to the right of the lighting button is the point size button. It's only relevant in point clouds. The point size slider will adjust the individual point size of the points in a point cloud. The special overlays folder in the layer tree is where you will find axes, crosshairs, legends, and other useful overlays. Right click on the status bar to display real time coordinate readouts in another coordinate system such as MGRS. The status bar will be yellow when the coordinate display is different from the native coordinates of the data. That concludes chapter three of the Quick Train Modeler Getting Started series. At this point, you should be comfortable with customizing the appearance of the scene to meet your needs. Our next step will be to make some basic measurements and terrain profiles. Please view the rest of the series on our website and contact us if you need any help. We'd love to hear from you.